Big 90. Our podcast is all about soccer, all things soccer. Soccer has arrived in town. We are ready to fight. They're classy too, man. I can wear this on a date. <laughs> People who are most successful are the ones who don't just give up. To go boxes, they're not good. They're fing amazing. How did we get started here at Albemarle Paper? Well, late 2008, my cousin John and I started this paper company and we got all sorts of different products. Hey, Nick, come on, man, let's get to work. We got cleaning products too? You got a party this weekend? We got your back. Anything you need here at APS plates, napkins, silverware, table covers. We got everything covered, right, boys? Mm. What are the items do we carry? Paper towels, I got it. Toilet paper, I got it. Gloves, we got you. Pizza boxes. You're probably wondering, where are we? Where's Albemarle Paper? Don't you worry about that. We got you. I'll bring the product. Welcome to a new episode of the Golden Boots Podcast. Our podcast is all about soccer, all things soccer. We love soccer. We brought the podcast back. We are excited and we wanted to bring on a very special guest today. We've got Mackenzie Gaines, Charlotte FC Ford. Mackenzie, how are you today? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. Good, good, man. I'm excited today. We got, we're trying something a little bit different. We're going to do something like mukbang style we're here at Keonda, one of my favorite restaurants we're gonna try a couple of dishes Mackenzie, are you ready let's do it nice i know you're from austin right so you like you know the mexican vibe right some tex-mex yeah nice. i love me some mexican food so nice. perfect perfect man so uh our podcast we really like to get to know players a lot as well and so i kind of wanted to kind of ask you about your background man you you grew up in austin correct yeah, uh, born and raised in Austin, lived there for, you know, the first 18 years of my life before I went to residency in Florida, and uh, then went overseas and played in Germany for five years, um, ended up coming back last season and playing for Austin FC, and then I got drafted in the expansion draft in Miami and Charlotte. Nice, awesome, and uh, tell us about, like, your beginnings, like, what do you remember most about, like, when you first started playing soccer? Uh, I mean, initially I just started playing because all my friends were playing. Uh -huh. uh, I remember my best friend at the time signed up, I think we were five or six years old, and I didn't want to be left out, so I, you know, I joined him, and I mean, the rest is history. Here I am. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, at a young age, I think that it's always just about having fun. Okay. You know, I played a couple other sports, played some t-ball, played some basketball here and there, but, you know, nothing ever stuck. It was just soccer, you know, so gotcha. it's just kind of, you know, forgetting about everything else that was going on and just playing the game and, you know, it evolved into my profession, so. Okay, cool. Talk to us about Lone Star, the academy, man. What do you remember from those days? Uh, good times, man. It's where I met a lot of my best friends and uh, guys that I still talk to. I... Actually, the last time that we were up in New York, whenever we played against NYCFC, I gave a few old teammates some tickets that okay. I used to play with in Lone Star. But no, it was good. Um, I feel like it was really like my first organized soccer club that I ever went to. And, you know, because of that, I learned a lot. And um, I think they helped me to be seen by a lot of other, um, you know, whether it was the youth national team or, you know, other scouts from colleges or professional teams. So um, I think that it was definitely a very, very important step in my development. Okay. Talk to me a little bit about that. I know you went from Austin to Wolfsburg, correct? Uh -huh. How was that transition? Uh, it was good. You know, I think that I got really lucky because whenever I went to Germany, I found a group of friends that I really connected with uh -huh. really early on, so that was really nice. Uh, they knew a bit of English, so I wasn't stuck okay. to speak in German the entire time, which was really cool. But I think the transition was made a little bit more seamless because I had that residency experience whenever I was in high school. So um, I went to a regular high school for the first year and a half, my freshman and first semester of my sophomore year. But then after that, I moved from Austin to Bradenton, Florida in IMG, okay. where uh, I went to residency. So I think that that whole experience of being, you know, away from home but not too, too far away was really, really um, helpful for me in that huge transition. So, okay. You know, moving across the world. Okay. 
All right, cool, cool, cool. Before we continue, we got some food out here for you. Uh, what do we have? Uh, I see you eyeing it. I see you eyeing it. <laughs> we got you. We got you. That's a lot of food. It is. It is. All right. So we've got quesadilla. What else do we have here? The cubano. Okay, with some fries. I think that's not a model. Lunch fajitas. Okay. And then you know what? Show the camera quick. We got a cubano right here. Yeah. Or use your phone. Use your phone. And then what else do we have? Small fajitas, okay. All right. Part-time food modeler, part-time soccer player, right? Add it to my resume. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. Go ahead, dig in, man. What do you uh, want? We're gonna go for uh, the quesadillas. First. Okay. Let's see what we got. Yeah, for sure. All right. I'll take one, and then the other one's for Gwen. Money. It's good. Big thumbs up. Money. That is good. This is why we're switching the show up a little bit. You know, we want to have uh, Charlie give me more players. So <laughs> I think you you get to people's uh, heart through their food, through food, right? Yeah, you get the money. All right. So just continuing, uh -huh. talk to me about going to Germany, man. Like, what? How? Like, how difficult is that in terms of like being in a country where like you don't really know the language? Yeah, it was tough, and I think that you know being away from everybody, like my friends and my family, was even tougher. Um, but I think that I was held because I knew what I really wanted and that was, you know, to be a professional soccer player and I knew what I signed up for before I went over and, you know, I knew that it would be hard going over but it was everything that, you know, I was willing to endure to, you know, do what I wanted to do, which was play soccer professionally. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really important too, right? Like, from the beginning, you kind of know the end goal, right? Sure. So when obstacles come up, you're like, okay, this is part of the journey. Part of success is understanding that there will be difficulties. And you enjoy the moments. They're more sweet Absolutely. when you go through the, through journeys like that, right? 100%. 100%. Nice. You know, 100%. Yeah. And then one of the things as I was looking through some of the teams that you played, man, I can't pronounce half of them. So I want to kind of hear the pronunciations from you. So you started at Wolfsburg, right? Then where did you go? I'm sure that if you asked a lot of Germans, they said that I'm butchering them too. <laughs> uh, I played for, uh, after Wolfsburg, I went to Darmstadt 98, which is like Darmstadt 98, okay. um, which is a second division team. And then uh, I bounced around the third division with a couple of loans. Uh -huh. uh, I went to Sonnen of Grossaspa, and then I went to a team called Eversdal Zwickau out in East Germany. Um, and then after that, I ended up in Hanover. Okay. And, there you uh, go. That's an easy one. Hanover 96, right? Hanover 96. Yo, I got that there one. There you go. <laughs> got it. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Yo, your pronunciation on those was really good, actually. I've had enough time to <laughs> say it over and over again. Nice, man. Awesome. Talk to me also then. Uh, Austin FC, their inaugural season, they start. I believe you went there on trial first. Yeah, so it was actually a really tough situation for me because um, I, at the end of um, that season in Germany, I was supposed to sign a contract extension with Hanover, and pretty much like the sporting director, I communicated with my agent, like the contract's done, like it's sitting on the table, the sporting director, um, it just has to be signed by you guys, and a um, week went by, didn't hear anything, two weeks went by, and then it turned out that the sporting director and the coach both the, both the guys who wanted to keep me got fired. Oh, wow. So the two guys that wanted to keep me got fired, and I hadn't played a whole lot that season because of the whole COVID situation. Right. Um, so I was out of contract, didn't really have, you know, too much, too many prospects to look at just because I hadn't played all that much. Um, so I came back here, I, uh, through my agent, got connected with LASC. I went out there for a trial, and unfortunately, they were playing, you know, a ton of games in that time span that I was out there. Okay. Horrible timing. Uh, you know, I went out there, and I was there for 
um, about a week, and they had three games in that week. Okay. So, you know, they weren't really training. It was just pretty much like playing games and rehab. Okay. Um, so I came back to Austin, and um, uh, somebody reached out to my agent, and I was there um, pretty much the next day and trained with them, had a really good first training session, and um, slowly from there, you know, just kind of worked myself into the team, and um, I think it was about a two-week process, so um, between that first training session and uh, the time that I signed, so okay. um, it, it was really nice, and it was... Uh, a great time in my career. And, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool just playing like 10 minutes away from where I grew up and nice. family and friends were there every game. Was, was yeah, we'll, we'll get back to it, but we'll, we're going to try a little bit more food here. And then we have uh, Manny, tell us what we have right here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm the soft serve. Uh-huh. Uh, so we're the, the first ever in Charlotte to do the soft serve margaritas. So essentially, it's a soft serve kind of ice cream, but we make our own mixes with our fresh juice, lime juice. Flavored mango, uh, lime, and a one in the middle is going to be the swirl, so both flavors. Um, the tahini rim is semi spicy rim with a little bit of chamoy, which just holds the tahini together. We have a couple more. Good at the same time, hold on. Alright, one, two, three. That's pretty good. That's If you were uh, wanting to have one of those days, you could definitely go crazy on something. <laughs> now I know. Well, what, you ready to try one? Try it. That's good, huh? That's really good. Like, dangerously good. <laughs> okay. You could do that every day. Yeah, that would do some serious damage. You want to try the Cubano? You want to try the Cubano? I'll try a little bit. Um, I like the, the fajita as well. This is Adam Armour's go-to. Is it? What's Adam Armour's go-to? This? Yeah, the Cubano. Alright, we're eating this for Adam's birthday, so happy birthday, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to take that piece I kind of cut? I was trying to... I definitely have to study on how to successfully do this because I feel like we're all over the place with it, but... Alright, let's try this Cubano. Yo, that is good. That's cool. What I didn't eat before I came here next. We've got arroz con pollo. What else do we have? It's arroz con pollo. That's shrimp and chicken. All right. So we've got arroz with steak and arroz with shrimp. Jeez. So listen, que onda hooks us up. What can I say? They're like only, only the best for the best, you know? I like this gig you got, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so getting back to Austin, you know, like you said, I mean, boyhood guy from the city, right? Playing in his in the the, the first inaugural season for Austin, man. Talk to me about the feeling of that, because I mean, that doesn't happen, right? You know, first of all, it's really difficult to start a new soccer club, right? And second of all, I mean, like it's in your hometown, and you're playing in the first season for it. Talk to me about the season. It was awesome. And honestly, like, to be completely honest, like, it felt God-ordained. Like, mm. because it was, like, so awesome. You know, I took you through, like, a little bit of the emotions behind, you know, and what happened in, in Hanover. You know, me supposed to be signing that contract, and it, it fell through, but um, God brought me something better with Austin. And, um, you know, I'll look back on all that very, very fondly. It was very cool, you know, just playing, 15 minutes from where I grew up and friends and family were there and my parents were there every single game and you know, it was awesome. We had some growing pains um, but you know we started to figure things out towards the end of the season and um, you know you look at them now and they're flying so I yeah. mean, it, was, it was really really cool. Nice. Q2 is awesome. Nice. Talk to me about the level of MLS when you first started playing it in Austin man. What was it like? Uh, it's a very different game than what I was accustomed to you know playing in Germany because I was used to playing you know um, 
kind of like lower division football, not Bundesliga, but like second division, third division football. Uh huh. And um, that has a lot more to do with fighting. And I think the MLS has, you know, a lot more talent, and it's a it's a cleaner game compared to you know the lower divisions of Germany. So I had to accustom myself to that. But um, you know, the level was really really high. You know, from the first second that I stepped in and. Um, the way that we were coached, the way that we trained, you know, everything was just done at a very, very high level. Nice. And what do you think, what do you take most from that first season? What do you think you learned from that inaugural team? Um, I think that I learned a lot about myself and, um, you know, I think that I learned that, um, that I could play in the MLS, to be completely honest, you know, stepping into it, um, you know, I, I kind of had to make a name for myself and kind of paved my own path and, um, to show everybody, like the supporters and you know the coaches, that you know I could play at that level, and um, I ended up getting you know nine games towards the end of the season. I kind of had to wait my turn and um, just battle my way through the trenches, but then I got that opportunity, and luckily I scored the goal against Galaxy that kind of put my foot through the door. But um, nice. Talk to me about that first goal, man. What did it mean to you? First goal ever in MLS for your hometown club. It was awesome. It's probably the best night of my life. To be Okay. Like, I don't think that I slept that night. It was, <laughs> it was crazy. I think I, it was huge. Honestly, I think I gained like three thousand followers in the space of like okay. two days. Like Bleacher Report posted it. Uh, it was huge, and it was awesome scoring it. You know, in my hometown with my parents looking in and watching the game. My best friends were all there. Um, really, really special. I think that if you watch the goal back and you look at my celebration, you can see, you know, what it meant to me. Yeah. Um, the celebration was full of a ton of emotion, and you know, I'll never forget it. Nice. And then you have a very particular celebration as well that uh, I asked you off camera, but I want you to talk about it today, too. I think it was against Orlando. You scored your very first goal for Charlotte. And you went, it, went, it went something like this, yeah, right? Like that. Nice. Talk to me about what it means. Uh, it just means I love you in sign language. And I saw Sergio Aguero do it whenever he used to play for Manchester City. Okay. And I thought that it was really, really cool, so I kind of took that from him. And uh, whenever I was playing in Germany, I started doing it just because my parents and my family weren't there to watch me. So, like, I'd do it on camera so that they could see it back home, like, after the game and um, just know that it was for them. So, okay. So, something that I took with me. That's really cool, man. I like that. That's a really cool story. I appreciate it. Nice. All right, we'll take another break. And what do you want to What do you want to grab? you want to try the arroz con pollo or do you want to try? I feel like we got it since they brought out so much. Yeah. We got to dig into that. Which one do you want to try? I'll try the chicken. All right. Okay. Gwen, what do you want? We told you this was going to happen. I Let me try the shrimp. We fell in love. Dang, they're about to hit me with the copyrights for the music. All right, we're trying out the arroz with shrimp. And I didn't then know you'd have arroz a, con pollo. I didn't know you'd have a piece like this for us, man. Listen, bro. That's crazy. Nothing but the best for you, bro. That's crazy. Listen, don't tell any other, other players we did this stuff. Listen, Latanzio, every David Tepper, whatever you want, like. <laughs> Listen, nothing but the best I can own that. What can I say? How's yours? Honestly, I hope that they let me take some home. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know I asked you before, too, about, like, Austin food versus Texas food, right? You starting Austin, to find a groove here? Austin versus Charlotte? Yeah. Um, a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, what can I say? I've been spoiled at both places. Austin has some good Tex-Mex. Charlotte has a mix of, a, you know, a ton of good stuff. Um, I don't know which one I prefer, though. See, you started off with Austin in our last one. Yeah. Now it's 50-50. I'm getting pulled to the dark side, man. Nah, this is the light. Maybe the light side. This is for We Are Austin TV. <laughs> We're slowly pulling in, in here. <laughs> nice, nice. Talk to me also about the expansion draft in December. I was there, you know, here in Charlotte. You know, we're looking at the names coming up. You know, McKenzie Gaines to Charlotte FC. One of the expansion picks. I think it came as a surprise to everybody in Austin. Did it come as a surprise to you? Yeah, it was shocking, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, I got the news 
or actually, I was in New York with my friends, my girlfriend, on uh-huh. just kind of like a, you know, friendcation. Um, and I was eating breakfast one morning, and then I got a call from my agent, and he was just like, hey, I think that Charlie's going to pick you up in the expansion draft. And I was like, uh, okay. Honestly, I thought that it was going to be like a week away. Uh-huh. Um, we finished up breakfast, and we went to the airport because we were flying back home. And at the gate, I, would, I Googled the expansion draft, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's tomorrow morning. And, you know, I flew back home, and I got another call, and he's just like, it's going to happen. Charlie's going to take you. So in the space of, you know, 10 hours, I went from thinking that I was going to be playing in Austin SC to, like, okay, I'm going to be a Charlotte SC player. Yeah. So the next morning, I FaceTimed Miguel Ramirez, and then later that evening, there was a draft, and there it was. Charlotte there it SC was. It's, it's crazy, too. How, how does a soccer player take that impact when you go from, you know, thinking you're going to be in one place, and then, boom, all of a sudden, now you're in Charlotte? Um, I think it was just like a mixture of emotions and, um, you know, obviously I told you that, I, you know, I was the hometown guy and yeah. it was really, really cool playing there, but I think that I, lo- I also saw a ton of opportunity with Charlotte and, you know, it was nice to be wanted by another team, um, especially the way that, you know, the, the, the phone call with Miguel went, um, he kind of laid out how he wanted to play and how he envisioned me and I thought that that was much more how I envisioned myself versus how Austin saw me. Uh, I think playing with Austin, I was playing as like the number nine role. Right. Partly because of, you know, personnel issues. Um, but they had also told me that they were going to play me in a mixture of positions, you know, through the middle and on the right. But I definitely feel more comfortable out wide. Okay. And uh, Miguel also, you know, confirmed that with me. And uh, I just, I liked his view with um, where he saw me playing. And um, I came here and, you know, met some more, more great people, you nice. know. Latancio and um, you know Zoran, all great people in the staff, and um, I think that you know being here those first couple weeks and meeting everybody and um, becoming more comfortable with you know my surroundings and uh, the way that Charlotte wanted to play definitely helped me to settle in more. But you know it was definitely something that um, took time to process, you okay. know, because of how sudden that it happened. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a big change for you, right? I mean, you're living, you're kind of leaving a comfort zone. In you know your home city, like you think For you're gonna sure. be there, and boom, okay, another expansion team. For sure. And talk to me, what what kind of similarities have you noticed from this expansion team and the Austin expansion team, and maybe some differences? Because I know I think right now there's still three games to go with a possibility of a playoff. For sure, um, I think that it's very difficult to come into any professional sports league, um, and there are definitely growing pains that come with that. You know. Um, our first season in Austin, we kind of had a tough go around in the first, you know, three fourths of the season, but we really started to figure it out towards the end of the season, and you see how they're doing, you know, this year. Um, I think that here in Charlotte, we definitely hit the ground running a lot faster than we did in Austin, and you see that we're fighting for a playoff spot, you know, which I think that is um, definitely attainable, and we have three tough games coming up, but if you look where we're at at the beginning of the season, I remember actually the reason why I deleted Twitter is because I saw a bunch of stuff about people going around and they're just like ranked the Eastern Conference and in everybody's table, Charlotte FC was last, Right. you know, and I think that it had, you know, a little bit to do with the fact that we had an incomplete roster, but, you know, people just weren't betting on us, you know, um, because we were that expansion team, but I think that it shows a lot about um, Charlotte and the way that, you know, we've put together the roster and the way that we've, you know, grown together right. as a team, the way that we keep getting better um, to be able to complete to compete for a, play, a playoff spot, you know, which 100%. isn't such an easy thing to do, I think, if you look at it historically. Yeah, um, for sure. And, I mean, this hasn't been a regular season. You know, there was a coach firing right in the middle. I mean, right. you can't be a Queen City, I guess, without any drama, right? right. So, right, right. I mean, with that... You're now in with Latanzio, right? Like we said, there was a couple of, like you mentioned, like the roster didn't seem as complete. And through all of that, man, I personally felt like the team has been competitive in most matches. I mean, there's been games where, like, Toronto away, you know, LAFC away, second half, you kind of see it. But most games, you guys have been competitive. Absolutely. You know, you have those anomalies where, you know, the scoreline doesn't flatter you. But like you said, I think that we've definitely been competitive in, you know, 90% of the games that we've played this season, which is, you know, it's huge. And I think that, you know, if certain calls go our way or, you know, if the ball bounces a certain way, then we have an extra, you know, five or six points 
in our bag this season and you know we're already sitting in a playoff spot you know right but that's not the case and i mean everything's still in our hands so you know, we're still look to take care of business nice and talk, talk to me a little bit about the fan base as well you know i mean you've experienced that, that austin fan base as well which i think is they're one of the best in mls right and then charlotte with thirty thousand averaging every week and i mean 75,000 the very first match. I mean, like, you've been blessed to experience, in my opinion, two of the best uh, MLS fan bases. 100%. Yeah, I mean, I get, I got really, really lucky. And um, like you said, I've been totally blessed. You know, Austin, I think Q2 has been sold out every single home game they've had since it opened. And, you know, here, like you said, we average, you know, 30,000 supporters every game. We got 75 against Galaxy. So, no, it's awesome, and it's great to see, you know, the way that Charlotte's accepted the team, and um, it definitely makes games easier whenever you feel the fans, you know, on your back pushing you. 100%. It's really, really special. 100%. Yeah, I think, I mean, I've, I've been in Charlotte my whole life. I was pretty amazed, too, of just, like, how many people actually show up to games, right? Like, I didn't know, I didn't know what to expect. But what we have, I think, is very special here. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Speaking of special, all right, let's dig into something else. Dude, look at the table next to you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they got some more stuff coming. Ooh, okay. What do you have? Did you take photos of that? I got to tap out soon. Yeah. You want to? <laughs> yeah, bring it in. You have to. All right, what do we have? This is chili relleno. Chile relleno, mmm, okay. Chili chong. Well, are I they alcoholic? Yeah. All right. I did the straw okay. now, so. Do you think I can have another glass yeah. of water? Maybe good. Bring a fresh one or fill this up. Just fill this up. Okay. I know you haven't done a podcast like this before. Never, man. It's gotta become the new norm. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'd be like, hey, can I interview this player? They're like, yeah, but they want to go to a restaurant. Just give us way too much food. Too. <laughs> Listen, top bin, we, we're out here just breaking standards. What can I say? Yo, that is good. I'm about to take a fat nap out of Dang, this is good too. That would have missed you. Huh? No misses, man. You heard it from Mackenzie, no misses from Keonda. Zero. We're trying out the tres leches here with Mackenzie Gaines. All right. Just dig in. Dig in. Yo, this is so good. Um, Dios, you got me speaking Spanish out here, Keonda. <laughs> oh my God, tres leches. I say que onda. Thank you very much. Yo, que onda doesn't miss, yo. Good God. All right, you gotta cut that. Uh, it's not. Easy to cut. It's not. Oh, that is good. Listen, when I started this podcast, I had a dream of one day getting food. Here it is. <laughs> what do we think? Solid? No misses. That's good. All right, where were we? I'm lost now. Everything is so good. What were we talking about? Inaugural season. There you go. What's been your favorite moment so far of the season? Um, I think that game against Chicago, to be honest. I don't think that, that was I, incredible, bro. I don't think I've ever come back from being 2-0 down in such a you know, short amount of time. Yeah. And the way that we won it um, was huge. And the, way, the way that it you know, knocked Chicago out of the playoff contention and you know, pushed us forward was huge. So Listen, nobody else makes that run for Nuno's goal and gets there like you, bro. I appreciate it. So that's what I was like. That's why my man needs to start on that right wing. I appreciate it. Tom's if you're listening to this. <laughs> but, yeah, no, seriously. I mean, like, you've, I, I think you've, you've been one of the players, in my opinion, who's been 
in my front three, I would have you starting right now, you know, so. Thanks, man. Yeah, so you've played well. One of the things, though, too, we saw on FIFA, man, FIFA 23 has your pace at 87. I kind of wanted your thoughts on that. You got me frenzied. <laughs> we were like practice. 87. Come out practice, man. Come out to practice. Somebody, yeah, just come out to practice and time me because 87 is a joke. I'm so sorry. But it is. 87 is a joke. Um, you're kind of salty about that. Hey. EA Sports, if you're watching this, uh, get my man up from an 87. Because, yeah, I was like, there's no way, you know. <laughs> nice. Um, talk to me about Latanzio also as a coach. I mean, he's a, he's a guy who, in my opinion, is very personable with players, right? Yeah. And I know he, he's had a hand in helping Brand Bronica grow, you, Ben Bender. What is he like? Uh, Latanzio's honestly probably been one of the most impactful coaches that I've worked with throughout my entire career mm. um, because of the fact that you said that he's so personal with the players and he's not afraid to you know talk with the players and um, you know he had a different role at the beginning of the season with Miguel as the head coach he was the assistant and his job was to kind of you know go around and talk to the players and just to show us ways through video that we could get better um, and I think that a lot of faces in the locker room were thrilled whenever he got that head coach position because you know we all had that relationship with him mm. and um i think that he's somebody who you know burns for the game this passion is contagious and i think that it affects a lot of people you know in the team and right. i can definitely see the growth that i've you know been through in this season alone um where i was at the beginning and where i am now um, i think it's two completely different places and i think that he plays a massive role in that so um yeah, very appreciative to him for that. Nice, yeah. I mean, also, I think it's very difficult, too, when you go through a coaching change. First of all, you have a brand new squad of 25-plus players, right? And you go from your first ever coach to now you have to get in an interim coach right now, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think just, in my opinion, all the obstacles that the team has had, you know, that's something that I, I, I think not a lot of fans give merit, like, People are upset when we lose matches, which, I mean, it's kind of a good thing in my opinion because that means, okay, like, this squad, like, they believe in it, right? For sure. And that doesn't just come from 11 random players just doing stuff. It takes a work ethic. It takes, you know, getting to know each other, right? Absolutely. And, you know, it was tough whenever the coaching change came about, but I think that it was a great decision to bring somebody out of the ranks that was already in the club. Mm. You know what I mean? Who already knew the players and... Um, who already had that connection with us, and I think that that kind of sped up the process with Christian. Um, and I think that, you know, we're still growing and we're still trying to implement some of the ideas that he has, and we're not perfect, but, um, you know, I think that each week has been a step forward. Right. It has, it has. I like that, man. And then finally, I just want to ask you a couple more questions, and then we'll, we'll, we'll be done today, too, because we got to go take a nap after all this food, because it was so good. I'm about to knock out. <laughs> um, Talk to me a little bit about your time in the in the youth levels too, as well with the U.S. national team. I know you. I found a really good picture of you with Waya, uh, with McKinney, with Christian Pulisic. They get deep in the vaults, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do, bro. I don't know how long it took you to find that. <laughs> um, it was great, and I spoke about my time with Lone Star and how appreciative I am that they helped me to get seen by um, the youth national team. But I think that if it wasn't for my experience in residency, that I probably wouldn't have made it as a professional. Mm -hmm. Just because, um, you know, it was a collection of players that was, you know, who were from different parts of the country. And I think that, you know, training with the best, it only made me better. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a big believer in iron sharpens iron. And that it was definitely, definitely the case in residency. You know, training with the 30 best players in the country at the time only made me better. And I think that it also instilled, you know, certain habits um, that I still carry forth to this day, whether it be in the gym or um, pre-game or post-game. Um, I think that every experience that I had made me better. And um, I was in residency for about two and a half years with the end goal of going to the U-17 World Cup. And unfortunately, I made every camp and every squad up until the World Cup. But, um, you know, it was just another moment of adversity that's you know, pushed me to, to work even harder and to be an even better player. And um, I definitely am very appreciative of my time in residency and with these national team. What would you say, what would be like your number one tip for somebody? Because 
through those adversities. Like somebody that wants to be a soccer player in the future, that wants to play professional, that wants to be part of these youth national teams, what would be your number one tip? Uh, you just got to outwork the competition. Mm. You know, it's not um, a surprise, really, that any of the players are where they're at. Um, it's definitely not through, you know, magic or through luck, but... Um, I think that if you really go out each and every day with the goal of making yourself better, um, that you will ultimately attain those goals, you know, whether it's in soccer or in a different profession. I love that, man. I mean, I think that's so true, right? I mean, if success was easy, we'd all be pulling up here in Ferraris, you know, right? Sure. But the reality is it takes work. It's a grind, right? Like people see the highlights of you scoring and celebrating, but they don't see the back end, the work ethic the struggles, the adversity that comes into going to becoming the player that you are, correct? Sure. Absolutely. And then there was a really special moment against Chelsea, man, that you uh, exchanged shirts with Christian Pulisic as well, right? Yeah, kind of like a full circle full circle moment for me. Um, it was really cool. You know, we grew up playing together in residency, and um, it's really cool to see the path that soccer's taken him and all that he's achieved. But, yeah, it was really, really cool just to connect with him and, um, to exchange shirts and to play on the same field as him again. Nice. Really good player. Well, cool, man. Well, listen, if uh, I know he may not be staying at Chelsea for much longer, so if you can help, help him hook him, hook him up to come to Charlotte, man, let us know. Doors be open, there. Christian. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. And then finally, I'll just ask you then, man. Uh, I always like to end our podcast with this. Um, what does success mean to you from, so- from a soccer point of view? Mm. Or I guess just in general. Um, I would say that success means ultimately attaining the goals that you set forth for yourself. Um, whatever it may be, you know, success may be to some players, um, you know, to get in the starting lineup or to score a goal, but success may be for other players, you know, to make the bench and to be a part of it. Um, I think that success varies depending on who you ask, but yeah, I think that, you know, if I had the goal of doing one thing and... If I was able to attain it, I would definitely, you know, say that that was successful. Mm, I love that. Man. That's true, bro. I, th- I think all of us measure it in a different different light as well. Absolutely. But it, in anything, like we've mentioned, it always takes work, right? Without yeah. work, I, I've always heard work, uh, luck is spelled W-O-R-K, right? Like, even, like, when people tell me I get lucky, I'm like, no, I don't. Mm-hmm. Like, I did something for this to happen, right? For sure. So, for sure. Nice. With that, we end another episode of the Golden Boots Podcast. Mackenzie, thank you so much for coming on today, man. I hope you had a wonderful time here at Keonda as well. I know I did. So if you guys want to check them out, they got four different locations. I mean, this is one of my favorite spots. Thanks for having me and thanks for feeding me. Top Big 90, our podcast is all about soccer, all things soccer. Soccer has arrived in town. We are ready to fight. They're classy too, man. I can wear this on a date. <laughs> People who are most successful are the ones who don't just give up 